Presbyterian Church. In this world of confusion, we gather here to stand firmly on the foundation of God's kingdom. Please join me in the call to worship. Let us praise God as long as we live. Let us sing praises to God all our life long. Happy are those whose help is in God, Jacob. God watches over the strangers. God will reign forever.
near the end of July. Got one more month of summer to go. Summer always flies by quickly. A few announcements this morning. Big week for us here at uh, the Coleraine Presbyterian Church. This is uh, Vacation Bible School Week. Starts tomorrow at 6 p.m., goes to 8 p.m. There will be a uh, free registration, and uh, hopefully we'll get to lots of kids here. So if you have any neighbors, uh, any relatives that, that have kids, bring them, and uh, they'll have a great week. It'll be Monday through Friday, 6 to 8 p.m. Next Sunday is going to be a, a special Sunday. Many of you are familiar with the, the Donnelly family, and they are a very talented family of singers. They will be here to uh, share with us their ministry in song, and uh, then we will have a fellowship time afterwards, after the service downstairs. It's always a beautiful service. They do such a great job. Uh, so we look forward to having the Donnelly family with us next week. Uh, again, share, share with people, uh, Tell them that we're going to have a special service next week and come and join us. Believe it or not, we're only a few weeks away from our Backpack Blessing Sunday and Carnival Sunday for the kids. That will be on August 18th as the kids prepare to go back to school. So uh, that will be here in a few weeks. Any other announcements this morning? Anything else happening we need to know about? If not, we're ready for our praise song.
in the championship game, it was that mean team against his team. And he was the pitcher. Guess who won? His team won, and they celebrated. And he learned a very important lesson that day. When you have a big decision to make, always pray, and God will tell your heart which one you should, which direction you should go. He's a baseball player. That's great. Lord does. Uh, these kids make a lot of decisions. And prayer is so important when we make decisions because you speak to our hearts. You tell us what's right, what's wrong, what direction to go in. So be with these young men as they make decisions. Thank you for these things. In Jesus' name, amen.
direct people up. Remember this, it's, it's getting quite long, but we <coughs> try to keep it updated. That way we can take it home and pray for people during the week. I talked to uh, Alberta this morning, and the boy is home and recovering, doing well. Uh, he has people coming in, of course, to help her as he goes through his therapy, and he, he says uh, that they hope to get back to church sooner or later. So we'll continue to pray for uh, Roy's recovery. Also, I uh, talked to uh, Nancy, and uh, Bill was supposed to come home this past week. Un unfortunately, uh, the doctor said no, they want him to stay a couple more weeks. So uh, the date now for him to come home is uh, August 16th. That might be good because they're, they're trying to sell their house and, and move into a, a, an apartment or a condo that would make it much easier uh, for Bill. So maybe this will work out for the best, but th that's the update on Bill. Anything else? Any other prayer requests? Yes. Craig Closter uh, came home yesterday uh, back to Yorkville, and uh, he has an appointment to go Tuesday up to uh, Columbus Hospital, and they're going to reevaluate his arm. Continue to pray for uh, Craig Foster. And he gets uh, good news on that reevaluation. Jim? Joe, a uh, friend of ours, Chad Farmer. people 
protect us and watch over us. We lift up a Roy to you and continue to pray that he would improve. And uh, Bill, uh, his uh, coming home has been postponed, so we pray that in the next couple of weeks he would get stronger and that he would be able to come home. So Lord, we lift up all these other people we've been praying for so many. We pray for all these people who are battling cancer. We ask, Lord, that uh, you would watch over each and every one of them. Uh, be with them, whether it be uh, leukemia or lung cancer or whatever kind of cancer they are battling. We ask, Lord, that your healing hand be upon them. We pray that uh, their men would be effective. Treatments, chemo, if they're going through chemo, would be effective. Lord, some of them are in remission. I think of young uh, Leo uh, and others. We pray that you would uh, continue to... Uh, Keep them cancer-free, that uh, they do not have to battle that, that disease again. Lord, we lift uh, up uh, all these people that have uh, various health problems. Some of them are, are bad with health problems. Others are bad with back problems. A few have Parkinson's. So, some of them uh, are in need of medications for their condition. Watch over them. Others are recovering from surgery. Be with them. I think of young Harrison recovering from surgery. Uh, Lord, we think of uh, others who uh, are having uh, various health problems as far as uh, muscular dystrophy, young Olivia battling muscular dystrophy. Others are recovering from car accidents, other types of accidents. Some of them are, are facing uh, mental traumas after these accidents. Uh, we think of uh, Jim, Jim Bowen's grandchildren, and lift them up to you. Lord, watch over each and every one. Be with them. Help them through. We thank you for uh, your healing of, uh, of Dirk and the hip operation he went through. Continue to heal him up. Be with these others. Some are in rehab. Others are, uh, are in need of your touch. We think of uh, Jen and uh, recovering from shingles. Continue to be with her. So watch over all these people, and uh, we pray for them and lift them up to you. Be with uh, these unspoken requests also, Lord. You know the circumstances. You know the situations. Think of uh, Cheryl's request, and James, and Debbie's, and uh, Patrick's, and Mitch's family. Be with every circumstance and move and power in their lives. So Lord, we thank you for all uh, of these people. And, uh, we now we pray for this world that we're living in. The Olympics is going on overseas. We pray that uh, nothing uh, terrible would happen. So many uh, groups uh, try to use the Olympics uh, to uh, violently protest uh, their particular issues. So we pray for protection for the Olympic athletes and the people there, and that uh, there, there would uh, not be any threats we ask, Lord, that uh, you would watch over this uh, world that we're living in. And so we pray that uh, prayer of confession. It seems like uh, there's so many things going wrong in the world, and they can be disheartening. But we pray that we would become lights shining in the darkness. And be with those around the world who are protecting us, our military people. Be with those around the world who are sharing the light and love of Christ to others. Watch over them. Now, Lord, we uh, come together and we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. I'm going to start with a little bit of the giving of our ties, our gifts, and our offerings.
praise you. We do thank you. You're so good to us. You've given us the gift of this day, a beautiful day. We appreciate it, Lord. Help us to, to use this day effectively in, in our lives, making a positive difference in the world. And we pray, Lord, that as givers to this ministry, we can make a positive difference in this community. So we pray that you would bless what was given, and I ask your blessing upon the givers. Continue to, to fill and overflow their lives with good things. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Maybe see you. He went 
as a 1920 year old, he, he went with no money in his pocket, just a guitar, to New York City and started playing in the coffee houses there. And uh, most of you know uh, the timeline of his life. He's, he's become one of the most famous uh, songwriters in, in history. He still is giving concerts today. He's 83 years old, still giving concerts today. When he was uh, 20, 20 years old, he appeared on that folk music scene in, in Greenwich Village there in New York. It did not take him long to achieve legendary status. Within a year, he signed with Columbia Records. Within two years, he had produced three albums with hits like Blowing in the Wind and Masters of War. A Hard Rain is going to fall. The times they are changing. With, with Dylan, the folk music scene experienced this great revival, and it became the main musical influence to fight for human rights and to protest war. Therefore, the folk music community wanted to anoint Bob Dylan as their king. They wanted him to lead the fight for human rights. They wanted him to lead the fight against the Vietnam War. Here was the problem. Bob Dylan did not want to rule that kind of kingdom. Like, it, like an actor who refuses to, to take a role for fear of being typecast in that role. Bob Dylan didn't want to be pigeonholed. He didn't want to be labeled as a folk singer. He knew that he had this God-given gift to write lyrics and to write melodies, and he wanted to creatively explore all these other areas. He didn't want to be typecast as a folk singer. So in 1965, he formed a rock band. He wrote songs like a Subterranean Homesick Blues and Like a Rolling Stone. However, most of the people that were coming to his concerts were still the folk music people. And when he brought out electric guitars and he brought out the drum set, they began booing him. They began throwing objects at him. Uh, they uh, called him Judas. And if you, if you look at some of the videos, you, you can see these, these things happening at, at his concerts. And he did all this because he refused to be their king. They wanted to destroy his career. So, Bob Dylan had this other vision. It was like a high, he, he thought it was a higher calling. No matter how, how many things they threw at him, no matter how much they persecuted him, they were not going to waylay his vision for his future. And, and despite the booze, despite the curses, he pressed on and history tells us that he had incredible success in a variety of genres, uh, in, in blues, in rock and roll, in country, and even in gospel. He produced three gospel albums, uh, very good albums. He went on to win Grammy Awards and, and an Oscar. He won the Presidential Medal of Freedom and a Nobel Prize in Literature, all because he saw something far greater in his life. Now, King David, during his rule over Israel, saw something far greater than the earthly kingdoms that surrounded him. Psalm 145, 10 through 12. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. So that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. David said that people who really know what God's kingdom uh, is all about, they, they understand that there is something greater than these earthly kingdoms in which we live. These faithful people see all that God has done. They see the beautiful sunshine of a beautiful day. They realize. God has created everything, and God has given all creatures life. God has given us the intelligence and the understanding to know who God is and have faith in God. And these people are moved to tell.
tell people that there is a more important kingdom, a, a kingdom that is unlike any kingdom on this earth. How do we know that God's kingdom is far greater than all of these other kingdoms? David said it this way, Psalm 145, 13. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And your dominion endures to all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises and faithful in all he does. Well, obviously, none of these earthly kingdoms are going to last. They're going to rise and, and then they're going to fall. The Roman Empire rose and then fell. The Egyptian Empire, the Babylonian Empire, the Persian Empire. All of these kingdoms had their time in the sun, but then they fell. It is the same truth for today's empires. The China Empire, the Russian Empire, the Great Britain Empire, the United States. We will all have our day, and then we will fall. David said there is an everlasting <coughs> kingdom far greater than any earthly kingdom. God promised David that one day one of his offspring would come to rule this everlasting kingdom and be an everlasting king. In David's mind, this eternal kingdom should be the focus of our priorities. We should begin to learn the principles and the wisdom and the truth that is taught in this everlasting kingdom take those truths and apply them to our lives and allow them to shape who we are. Now, during Jesus' day, the great kingdom of that time was, of course, the Roman Empire. Israel was being oppressed by the Roman Empire, overly taxed, oppressed under their rule. There were many Israelites who were looking for, for God's promise to David that one day there would come this Messiah who would rule God's kingdom. And, and so, many false messiahs would arise and claim to be the Messiah and then lead a rebellion against Rome. But Rome was so powerful that any of these false messiahs that would rise up and, and try to start a war, they would stamp out in the, uh, immediately and extinguish their lives. So in John chapter 6, 